Hey, good morning, Bill. Here we go. Here we go. After quite a uh, a weekend of uh, of high school football, and we still have some undefeated teams remaining out there. Uh, well, I think we have two now, and that would be Whitesboro in Class A and uh, and Frankfurt Schuyler in Class D. And you know, uh, I think I've been saying this all along that our best chances for a Section Three championship team in this area would be Whitesboro in Class A, and uh, let's see now. In Class D, you can pick and choose. Frankfurt, yeah. Dowsville, maybe. West Canada Valley, Dowsville. One of those three is uh, is going to come out to be our best chance in Class D. But, yeah. uh, you know, we got one more great matchup this coming Saturday uh, in Dowsville. Uh, it'll be undefeated Frankfurt at uh, once beaten now Dowsville. Uh, and you can bet uh, – I've I've written it on Twitter before that you can bet that West Canada Valley plays Friday night uh, at winless uh, Morrisville Eaton, and you can bet that uh, West Canada Valley after beating Dowsville on Saturday, uh, a lot of those players will get Dowsville this coming Saturday and 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 rooting for Dowsville to knock off Frankfurt because uh, that would leave uh, those three teams in a three way tie in that league and uh, yeah. you know they're all going to go to the playoffs anyway so uh, it was. I have to tell you, Saturday's game, and again, I don't, I don't care whether we're talking class double A or class D. That was one of the most physical football games that I've covered in a long, long time, and uh, uh, you know, great rival, great rivalry, and uh, I think a great overall mutual respect for one another, and uh, that was good to see. That was good old fashioned smash mouth football, play after play after play. Uh, uh, I tweeted when I got back to the office that um, uh, I wish I I wish I had a dollar for every time West Canada Valley Sean Pearson and Dowsville's Cole Harlow met shoulder pad to shoulder pad and face mask to face mask. I'll tell you, uh, uh, just hammered away. Both of those guys are uh, big, tough, physical kids, and yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it was it was just a great game to watch. And let's face it, West Canada Valley down twelve nothing right away had two or three turnovers in the first half and then score two late touchdowns in the second quarter to take a 13-12 lead and, you know, scored the last 27 points of the game with power football. Just uh, just hammered away with Sean Pearson. And, uh, you know, they've got a, a, a tight end who they turned into a fullback, uh, Mason Sloop, yeah. who's only a junior. He's like 6'4", 235 as a lead back lead blocking back for uh, Pearson and quarterback Matt Tobin, and they just hammered away. It was sort of like, uh, you know, looked like the Houseville teams of old, uh, the right. way they just used uh, power football to uh, control the football and the, and the clock. Well, and that rivalry is is really uh, New Hartford-Whitesboro, right? I mean, that's a that Dowdsville west Canada rivalry, rivalry is a, you know, year after year. It's one of the older rivalries in the state. Yeah, and you know, uh, Bill, that it just uh, just as Whitesboro has uh, in recent years dominated uh, that rivalry with New Hartford, um, Dowsville used to do the same thing with West Canada Valley. I think yeah. they beat him seventeen straight times, mm-hmm. and and then now lately, I uh, I think it's four out of the last six West Canada Valley's won. And uh, let's face it, in my thirty some years covering high school football in Central New York, we've only had uh, two state champions uh, that I've covered, and that would be Dowsville and West Canada Valley, yeah, both in yeah. uh, Class D. In fact, next year is the 20th anniversary for uh, for West Canada Valley winning our, our area's very first state football championship. So, uh, again, uh, uh, if they can handle it physically, I'd like to cover them uh, once a week, uh, that yeah, matchup. Yeah. But, uh, you know, uh, and, and they play an awful lot like Whitesboro. Whitesboro, big physical has great linebackers. They're unbeaten, and they'll be hosting New Hartford this Friday night in that rivalry. And I know, uh, I know New Hartford's lost uh, their last five, but um, you know, when it's New Hartford Whitesboro, it, it always seems to bring out the best in uh, in New Hartford, even if they're having a down year. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, looking forward to that matchup on Friday night, and then Saturday, Couple, uh, obviously, up in Dallasville at Bill Bynum Field, it'll be uh, unbeaten Frankfurt against. Uh, Dallasville, and I covered Frankfurt Friday night, Bill, on an absolutely gorgeous, perfect night for football at, at Frankfurt, and I feel I feel bad for Joe Streeter. He's a he's a tough, 
running back, uh, very speedy uh, tailback for Frankfurt. And on the opening kickoff, he hurts his ankle, and he wound up going off on a stretcher. And I'm going to have to find out today for tomorrow's column uh, wow. how he's doing. But uh, that's a big loss for Frankfurt, and I'm hoping he can come back for that matchup against Dowville. It will make it an even better game. Uh, but I have to tell you, Nick Menino, the, the fullback for Frankfurt, just – just took over the game against Westmoreland on Friday night. And, and Westmoreland played awfully well, too. Uh, turnovers kind of hurt him. But uh, the, what Menino did after after his running mate got hurt was uh, was very, very yeah. impressive. So if you had to, uh, if you had to, and I know it's tough in, in high school football, but if you had to pick it between Dallasville and, uh, and Frankfurt, I know Dallasville coming off a loss. Uh, what are your thoughts? Who, who is the stronger there? Uh... Again, it depends on Joe Streeter, I think, because yeah. he's a linebacker and a running back for Frankfurt. And it, obviously, going off on a stretcher, it did not look good uh, mm-hmm. Friday night. I did see uh, Frankfurt coach uh, Jeff Legace on Saturday. Obviously, he was at uh, uh, West Canada Valley Dallasville game scouting, and he still wasn't sure uh, what uh, the severity of, of the injury to Streeter. But if Streeter's there... I think it's going to be a great football game. If uh, if he's not there, it, it's going to be Nick Menino against yeah. Cole Harlow, really, on Saturday, much like it was this past week with Pearson and Harlow. But uh, I don't know. I think Dowsville is going to be in an ornery mood. Uh, I'm not sure if it's their homecoming, but I'm guessing it is because it's their last regular season got home it, game. Got it. And rarely does Dowsville lose two in a row. So uh, if I had to bet on it, especially if, if Streeter's out, uh, I guess I would go with Dowsville, but uh, Frankfurt Schuyler, I keep forgetting Ethan Irons is a great quarterback, and he's got a really, really good receiver in John Irons, his cousin. So, I don't know. They they can throw the ball. They're very – they can mix it up, so well. Boy, I got that'll I, I, depend on the weather too. But you're right. It, you, it should be a great one. I, I got to tell you, and I know you. You know, I did high school football for years on on the radio, and uh, did many games up in uh, in Dallasville. Something not a lot of people know, Ron, but um, when uh, a child is born in Dallasville, instead of having the the normal scenario where the doctors there and maybe the husbands there, they actually do it in a huddle. And um, <laughs> it is, it's born in these kids. It is unbelievable how football, how big that is, how big that program is in Dallasville. It's well, a, a great site in Dallasville, uh, and I'm sure you know it. Right behind the team is there. There's a hill where the press box is and everything, and uh, uh, it's it's lined with blue and white on on Saturdays yeah, on yeah. game day. So uh, it, it is a good site. They kind of overlook. Uh, the, overlook the field and yep. it, it's just a super uh, high school football setting I, I feel kind of bad for the opposing side because uh you know they're they're just there's very little stands there and everything but uh just it, it's kind of a tough place to go and win yep. and uh yep. you know uh, but this frankfurt team they used to be in class c and now they're a class d powerhouse and uh uh, Jeff Lecase has been around a long time, so I, be, I think it's yep. going to be a great, great game. Right. A couple others. Uh, RFA had a tough time, uh, 59-7. Uh, they lose to CBA, a very tough team. And you've talked about Proctor through the uh, through the season as really struggling when it comes to defense. Uh, they are able to get their offense going, but their defense has struggled. And, boy, it, it was a real indicator in the in the game against uh, Auburn the other night as well. So it, it was another... Uh, basketball score 52 yep. to 44 and you know uh, uh proctor mathematically is still alive but uh it's going they're going to need help and they've got to go to cicero north syracuse on friday night and beat an unbeaten team an unbeaten state ranked cicero north syracuse team so um i mean it's, be a it, uphill climb. it's all yeah. it, it it's all or nothing this weekend and uh they're going to have to uh play better defense obviously it, they 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 go to Auburn, a great great team with a super all state running back of their own, and Nas and Nas Smith, and they they score in the very first play from scrimmage. Uh, Jamarius Morgan like a sixty yard run, mm-hmm. but uh, it, it turns into a track meet again, going back and forth, and uh, you know they haven't been able to stop people. Uh, it, it's tough uh, trying to outscore teams every single week. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, 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 and, again, uh, they have some super talent. I really thought this was going to be their year, and uh, and geez, maybe they can blame me. I jinxed them. 
Yeah. Uh, and the other uh, that I want to talk, first of all, uh, you, it's Whitesboro and New Hartford. They're playing coming up this weekend. Is that the case? Yeah, it's Friday okay. night at Whitesboro. All right, big game. You still get a great crowd. But I got to tell you, looking at New Hartford's field for the first time, um, A, they have artificial turf, which you see, in, uh, which is very helpful, I guess, in schools here in upstate New York. But uh, that's pretty cool. They have a jumbotron. I've never yeah. seen a high school up here with a jumbotron, but New Hartford has a jumbotron. Yeah, it's they have crazy. one. Uh, I believe Sister North Syracuse has one, too. Uh, of course, CNS is one of the bigger high schools in the state, yeah, and yeah. Uh, that's like a college campus there. But, uh, no, that, that's uh, it's a rarity around here. And uh, who knows, you know, once one school gets it, yeah, you, right, everybody. you might see others get it, too. Uh, Whitesboro, though, had a real tough game with Central Square, but remains uh, undefeated, and they're ranked right in the top three in, uh, in New York State. Yeah, Whitesboro... Uh, Again, I love their defense. They're one of the few teams around that that plays great, tough defense. And uh, I I should throw that throw that out too. That West Canada Valley. Let's face it. Early on, they were down twelve nothing, and they made two goal line stands to keep it at twelve. I mean, to keep it at twelve nothing. So uh, great defense there. Whitesboro, though, uh, this past weekend, that Central Square team. They're really a double A school, and I saw them play lose to Proctor. A very tough physical team, and so that's a good win for Whitesboro. Uh, um, Dante Paletti threw two touchdown passes to Pat Kaler, who's a great athlete who yeah. didn't even play football last year. He's a baseball star, and so that's a good sign for Whitesboro that they can mix it up and and run and throw, yeah. uh, throw the football. So uh, I still see Whitesboro as a prohibitive favorite in Class A. I know they'll wind up probably facing East Syracuse Manoa in a rematch at the Carrier Dome in the finals, but I still like Voice Pro's chances. All right, this is the fun time of the year, uh, Ron, for you, certainly, uh, as it all, the playoff picture kind of getting into focus and um, and, the, and the real big games coming into play. So uh, Yeah, I'm going to mention in tomorrow's column, too, Bill, uh, I have to say at Newport, at West Canada Valley, the homecoming game against the arch-rival Dodge the last Saturday, they did a super job of uh, uh, it was breast cancer awareness day, okay. and uh, the, all of West Canada Valley's uh, players. I think they only have twenty three, but every one of them were they were wearing uh, pink socks, and they also um, uh, was a, made aware of uh, pancreatic cancer. It, it. it was a tough day, I think, for. He's a 385-pound lineman, Tazrin Lilly mm-hmm. for West Canada Valley. Yeah, a great, great kid and a great story. Uh, his uh, his mom passed away from uh, pancreatic cancer uh, mm-hmm. less than two years ago, and uh, so it, and, and that they wore purple, and that's their school color too. Yeah, but yeah. he wore purple, and uh, and and then they had pink uh, socks on. So it was sort of like. Purple and pink power that that, yeah. that I think helped uh, Will West Canada Valley to wow. win. So it was a super day there. Anyway, Pretty despite big. the rain. Yep, uh, interesting stuff. So uh, big weekend coming up, and Ron, we'll look for your story in tomorrow's OD, and we'll talk to you again next Monday. All right, thank you, Bill. All right, Ron Mosier with the Observer Dispatch at UticaOD.com. Got a break.